Good morning and welcome to the Royal Albert Hall. Come with me. This is London's Royal Albert Hall in Kensington, home of the National Brass Band Championships and many other wonderful musical events in the history of British music. Today is October the 28th, 2006, and we're about to witness the fantastic musical spectacle, which is the final of our Brass Band Championships. It's the most famous hall possibly in the world. So much music's happened here. And today, we are just minutes before the start of this year's championship. Come and look at the hall. And right now, the hall is empty, save for setting up. And what we're going to witness today are 20 of the top brass bands in the UK compete for the title Champion Band of Great Britain. This contest has been held here since 1945 and the championship since 1900. Every band plays the same piece. So it's an interesting day for the judges and for the audience who have to listen to 20 performances this year of Les Francs Juges by Berlioz, an arrangement for brass band that was actually first performed here in 1961. And so it's just before nine o'clock in the morning, in one hour, the first band will play. Take a look around the hall, capture the atmosphere, because in one hour, it will be very different. One, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Behind me, this very special cubicle is where the three professional judges will sit. We have three judges for this competition. They listen to all 20 bands. They make their decision at the end of the day. It's a tradition with brass band competitions that goes back 150 years that the judges can listen to the bands but not see them. Why in these days do they keep them in a box? Well, tradition is a wonderful thing. And uh, in the past, bands have always been happier when the judges don't know which band is playing. Do they know? Who's to say? But that's where they live. And in a few minutes, they will be led in there and they'll stay in there all day until about five o'clock when they come out. Okay, Rob, got it. Go on. Well, if it go off if necessary to the side of the stage. But... Oh, this is the National Championship so Trophy, the, the, the most famous band. trophy in the history of the brass band movement. Shining and resplendent, 20 bands all would love to take that home at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Six, 18, 15, 10, 11, 12, 3 and 4. Well, that's a very interesting, very interesting draw because if you look at um, some of the favourite bands, they're in the first half of the draw, which is not good for them. So of the, of the famous bands, with all respect to the other bands, we have Black Dyke playing at number eight. So that's almost halfway through the day. We have um, Buyers You View Band playing at seven, just before their arch rivals. Then we have the Foden's Band playing very well. They're late in the day, they're playing 15. And maybe today's favourites, because they have a late draw, is Grindthorpe Colliery playing 16. And then YBS Band, another bad draw for them, drawn number four. They were drawn very early at the British Open. Their luck is really not on this year in terms of the draw. So that's the day. The first band on I see is Newstead, uh, the Midlands champions. They will play the national anthem and then the test piece at 10 o'clock. It's 9.30, the people are coming in, the excitement is about to begin. Look how many people are coming in. You're, you're, you're that side, so the nearest lift to you will be lift number one. So what do I do with that? When I can just show it to him on the way out. Two. So there were two bands from Scotland, two bands from the Northeast, two bands from the Northwest, two bands from Yorkshire, also from the Midlands, from London, from the Southwest, and from Wales. So there are eight regions. 
the four best bands from last year are here automatically. They don't have to qualify. So we have 20 bands from all over the country. So most of the bands come to London the evening before. They travel down Friday afternoon. They all stay in different hotels around Kensington. They rehearse, hopefully get a good night's sleep. And then they get this dreaded telephone call in the morning. Their band is drawn number one, number eight, number 12, etc. So they don't all arrive at the same time. When they know the time that they'll be playing, they all arrive about 45 minutes before they're due to play. The bus comes here, they go downstairs, they change their clothes, they get their instruments, and then they have to go through a process called registration, because every member of the band has to be registered as a player. Now, I'm going to try and talk to the conductor of the first band, band number one, the dreaded number one spot, and see how he feels. Don't pull that thing. Hey, don't get out, mate. Number one. Can you give me ten seconds? Yeah. We're doing a we're doing a film for Buffet Grandpa yeah. of the day about the national championships. So this is Duncan Beckley, conductor of Newstead Welfare Band. He didn't personally draw the number one out of the, out of the hat, I'm sure. <laughs> so how do you feel, number one? Just go and give it your best shot? To me, I'm just going to give it my best shot. You know, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I say thanks, so that's the way it is. Yeah, best of luck. Okay, thank Cheers. you. Cheers. <laughs> well, when people come in, they usually buy a program. Many of them actually buy the music. The actual score, the conductor score of the piece that the bands will play. And certainly at the beginning of the day, they all follow it. And when you hear 4,000 people turn the page at the same time, it's quite interesting for the band. Band number one is on stage and about ready to begin our day of music. This is the Newstead Welfare Band from the Midlands in the UK, the middle of the country. There's going to be some speeches and then we play the national anthem and then the contest begins. And you can feel the atmosphere in the hall starting to build. Well, I've just come out, band number one is still playing, about halfway through the piece. It's very hard playing number one, because the question always is, will the jury remember the early performances? Will they remember how good number one, two, three, four? History shows that the bands in the second half of the draw, from number 10 onwards, always do better. Do they play better? That's the, obviously the jury's verdict. The most popular winning number is usually between 14 and 17. Today that gives us Foden's Richardson at 15, Grimethorpe at 16. The betting money would be on Grimethorpe. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Everything under control? Yeah. <laughs> Roughly. <laughs> I admit there's nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So here we are backstage again. The tension's mounting, the bands are getting ready to play. Over here we have Frank Renton, one of our most famous conductors and presenters. Let's see if Frank's got anything to say about the piece. 
Frank, do you think the piece will sort the bands out today? Oh, it's, it's an interesting piece. Um, it's, it's proper music mm. from the great sort of central repertoire of, of, of orchestral music. And so it's there to be interpreted and, and played as a piece yeah. rather than as, a, as just simply a test, mm. which is what the traditional thing is. So whether the bands will just play the notes, mm. top left hand corner, bottom right hand corner, and treat it as a technical exercise, or whether they'll treat it as a piece of music and go and play it as a yeah. musical exercise, that's one sort of um, area of dichotomy. And then it's in the lap of the gods with the adjudicators, whether they're looking for a band that can play with massive technical ability and, and never mind the music, or looking for yeah. a, a band that really makes a performance. Do you, so, think, do you think some of the bands actually care how it sounds with an orchestra, or they're just going to come and just play as they see it on the score? I think, to an extent, you've got to play what you see on the score, because mm. that's the name of the game, that's yeah. what you've got to play. But I think it's as well, before, rather than knowing what it sounds like with an orchestra, it's as well to know what Berlioz was thinking about before you start to play it, rather than what Frank Wright was thinking mm. about. And it's only by going back to the orchestral score that you can get some idea of what Hector yeah. Berlioz thought. He was a very young man, it's very immature music for exactly. him. He went on to do many greater things. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's what it is, it's a, it's a big test for some players. Yeah, and particularly the beginning. Not easy. Yeah. And, and it's, it's easy, of course, if what, what you do is just play the notes, bomb, bomb, finish. If you try and make music and try and stretch the endings, as you know, as a player yourself, that's when you're talking about breath control mm. and, and whether you can retain the pitch and one another to, to actually make a, a musical phrase and a musical curve to yep. what you're doing. And do it with all the pressure of the Albert Hall and that lonely stage for musicians. If you can't make music in the Royal Albert Hall, you can't make music, period. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Good to talk to Terrific. you. See you later. Easy now. Band number three has just begun, and I found this very important gentleman. His name is Anthony Banwell. He is one of the most important people on the website Four Bars Rest. Fourbarsrest.com is the premier brass band website in the world. Everybody looks at Four Bars Rest. What they do during the day is something very special, is that they make comments about each band, and as soon as they've played, they post it on their website. So anybody anywhere in the world feels that they're part of the day here at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, Anthony, do you actually write the comments? No, Ewan's doing the comments. Okay, so Ewan Fox, who's the other guy, we'll meet him later on. Very charismatic uh, man. He writes the comments, he listens, he knows the music. He's not the adjudicator, of course. We know where they are. But he makes his own uh, opinions and sometimes he's very close. Sometimes he's not very close at all. No, sometimes he's not very close. So now we're inside the hall and we're going to listen to the first big name band of the day. This is the YBS band, Yorkshire Building Society band, and their charismatic Australian conductor, David King. And we're at the side of the stage here and uh, you can sense from the atmosphere in the hall, and the hall is already now very full of people. It's a terrific atmosphere. We're going to hear YBS playing Les Francs Juges and expect something very special from this one.
So this is Dr. Robert Childs, one of our most successful and uh, charismatic of conductors. Also a great euphonium player, of course. Bobby Band's got another reasonably early draw. How do yep. you reckon? Uh, how do you reckon it's going to affect the band? Well, the draw always affects the, the competitions, as you as you know. Mm. Uh, they they need to. They need to play well, and they, they are playing well at the moment, but you need that little bit of luck to get a really good, clean performance. Uh, they're, they're, they're treating the piece seriously. I think mm. a, lot of, a lot of people think that the piece is a little bit easy. Uh, it's not easy. I think the first few <laughs> bands have found that out today. But what, just having heard uh, YBS play, there's a fantastic atmosphere in the hall. There yeah. seems to be a real buzz about the hall this year. Yeah. And you think maybe it's the fact that it's a well-known piece that's drawing people back in? Well, yeah, because the, the, the spectators in the brass band movement are quite an old bunch. Yeah. And they they like they, well certainly in Britain and yeah. maybe you, maybe you know we both know it maybe different in Sweden and uh, Norway and even Switzerland but but here the, the old tradition and we've got an old audience and they'll certainly enjoy this piece. Mm, they will. Thanks, Bob. All the best. All the best. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so this is Katrina Marzella, who's the most famous and lovely baritone player on the planet, and she's playing with the Fairy Band. How do you feel? Yeah, good. The band's playing well at the moment. Have you got much to do in this one? Personally, no, not really. No. Just it's the quality of the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone's got to play the part. It's very much a, a team effort. So you're not nervous at all? No, I'm quite calm. Good. Maybe when I get out there, I'll be a bit different. There's a lot of people out there this time. Yeah. It's a great audience, yeah. yeah. So early. Yeah? Oh, yeah, fantastic. nearly full. Good yeah. Stuff. Good so stuff. have a great day. Thank you. And we may talk to you later. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> So this has to be one of the biggest and most talented of all the tuba players you'll see. This is Gavin Sainer, who's playing with the Buyers Review Band, obviously one of the favourite bands today. And you enjoying the piece, Gavin? I love it. I think it's a great, great arrangement. Yeah. Great arrangement. Plenty of meaty stuff for the tubas as well. Yeah, plenty of dynamics. That's the main thing I like. Yeah. Well, bits and soft straight away. And yeah. It's great. And the Albert Hall is always a great venue for this kind of piece. I think There's something historic about it, isn't there? There is, and it encourages the sound, just carries. It's great for bands, great yeah. hall. Yeah. And I'm sure that's why we've seen so many people in the hall. They know it's a good piece and they love to hear the famous bands playing this kind of music. There's a, maybe a few lessons to be learned about test pieces today. Thanks for that. I am, no problem. So we're at that point in the contest where two of the most famous bands play side by side. We've just listened to the Buyers Review Band and now the brother of Robert, Nicholas, comes on stage with the famous Black Dyke Band and uh, possibly the most exciting moment of the day when the two most famous bands in this contest in recent years come head to head. So let's see how different the two bands are going to be.
That was Black Dyke, and that really set the place on fire. You can tell people love the performance, they love the sound of the band, and a wonderful atmosphere in the hall, probably the best atmosphere of the whole day. Uh, really interesting reading, no obvious mistakes, and I'm sure at the end of the day that will be up there. If not the best, very close. I think it's two minutes, so one minute. So I'm with two musicians from the Black Light Band. They've just changed. They desperately need to have a drink now. But uh, guys, how do you feel about it? Pretty good? Yeah, I felt pretty good on there. Yeah. Uh, didn't hear anything sticking to the It's just as fun as yeah. I think, I think the audience loved it. I think they loved the reading, the fact that there were lots of calm moments. And then when the punch came, it had some, had some real bite to it. It's a real test. It's a real test, yeah. But I mean, of all the great performances the band's done, you know when you come off stage when it feels good, don't you? That felt good. So if that feels good, like I said, watch this space at the end of the day. Thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. Everybody knows each other. David! This is my good friend, colleague David Thornton, his principal euphonium with the Black Dive Band. How did that feel, Dave? Pretty good? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's tough to, it's tough to say in that acoustic when you're on stage. It's, it's, uh, I think you have to be kind of sat away from it to hear exactly how it's sounding. But the band feels felt, good? Oh, yeah, we think so. It's, mm. we're, we always tend to be in good spirits when we come on stage, you know, whatever. Yeah. That's, the, that's the best way to do it. But. I think the most impressive thing from an audience point of view is that the quiet moments just had a lot of time and space yeah. that a lot of other bands have just simply tried to play through. That was a conscious thing. I mean, did well, the we, tempo we, fluctuate we in rehearsal? On, uh, slightly, but I mean, we work on the quiet playing year in, um, all, all the way through the year. We don't yeah. just do it for the, the contest, yeah. three or four weeks preparation or whatever. Yeah. It is, we do work on it from concert to concert, making sure we always maintain that. Mm. That standard, I think that's important. Otherwise, yeah. it just the skill tends to. But particularly under that pressure, so when you've got this, yeah. and the hall's pretty full today. I, I didn't really look at the audience <laughs> so much. <laughs> that's the secret. Don't look at the audience. Yeah. But, uh, there you are. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, uh, what did you think when you saw the number eight draw? A bit early, or you can cope with it? Um, well, it's 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 not too early. It is a little early, but it's not certainly not too early, especially with some very very vocal bands before us as well. Exactly, which makes a big difference yeah. for the judges to hear. Yeah quality before us and four then four or five good bands yeah. in the first half of the draw and then there's a space and two other big bands later but I have a feeling the judges will remember that performance. Yeah, I think so too. Are you hopeful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So this is uh, my good friend Philip Biggs. Philip is a fantastic promoter of brass events in this country. He was extremely busy yesterday with his brass festival at Regent Hall. He's there again tonight. A tireless promoter of brass bands. This is a great day at the Albert Hall, isn't it? This is the, the big day, isn't it? The yeah. big national brass band championships of Great Britain. Yeah. I think this this event, I think any any country would be so proud to be putting this event on, wouldn't they? Yep. To have it at their national brass band championship. Well, there's so much heritage here, all the great bands, and I think particularly this year there seems to be a real international flavour. There is. I mean, I think there's more international visitors than ever before, isn't there? Certainly, it seems that, that... certainly as long as I can remember. Yeah. yeah. As you were filming then, I was just putting up the, the comments for band number two, so uh, sure. Yeah. So earlier on in the day, we mentioned the name Ewan Fox and the Four Bars Rest website. We met his colleague Anthony. This is the real man himself. This is the man behind the website, and this is the brains and the words behind a lot of the great descriptions that we now expect to go around brass band contests. Having a good time? Having a really good time, enjoying it. It's not a great as a piece of that I've got to admit. It's not one that really I find excites me. The arrangement does sound a bit old in places, doesn't it? Does, it does, and it just lacks you know, depth, any depth about it at all. It's very bland. Yeah. But there's been some good performances. We like Corey, by easy viewers they are now. Black mm -hmm. Tech were very good. Mm -hmm. uh, YBS, interesting. Interesting, as, as always. As always, i got to say yeah. it for him. He does 
take yeah. a lot of risks. Yeah. And Rothwell were put a decent old fashioned. Did they? Good yeah, old, we've, a good old fashioned performance. Yeah. One of the ones that the people over 70 would enjoy. Well, you've done a lot of these contests. Don't you sense there's a bit of a buzz in the hall today? Well, the one thing I would say about it is brought the crowd back. Yeah. There's, there's a good audience here at, at good the audience. present time. Exactly. Uh, I, whether or not that's a good thing, uh, somebody said once, you know, you bring the audience back for public executions, but it doesn't make it right. So I think in many ways, <laughs> That's the same. That's the same type of thing. But yeah. it's nice to see the hall fairly full. It is, isn't it? It is. So and I, I just sense from around the corridors, talking to people, that they like the fact. Certainly, the organisers like the fact there's more people here. Now, you've got to you've got to go in now because you have to listen to the next panel. I have. I've got to. And do they're my, about to start. I'm so going to use my journalistic skills for the next Thanks for talking to our movie. It's a pleasure. And, uh, all the best to you. Cheers. And good luck, you all. Thanks. Yeah. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> Behind us now is the Foden's Richardson band. They've drawn uh, 15, if I'm not correct, 15. And so they've got a really fantastic draw. They're just going in for their registration now. They have to sign these bits of paper to say who they are, and they're not somebody else. They're not from the street. So uh, you see the the atmosphere now is the two two of the last big name bands are getting ready to play. Foden's here, and then to my right here, the Grindthorpe, the famous Grindthorpe Colliery Band, are getting ready for their big performance. <laughs> you take them to a competition? And oh. I said, I'm not really very, I haven't got the time and all that, you know. And he said, um, So I'm in discussion with the most successful conductor in the history of the National Brass Band Championships. This is Major Peter Parks. Everybody in the brass band world knows him. This movie is going to be shown to people who maybe don't know very much about brass bands. This is a very important, prestigious event, isn't it? The national finals. Oh, it's the big one, yes. The, the bands work towards this. Right from the beginning of the year, well, from the time it ends today, yeah. and start getting ready for next time. Yeah. And you were telling me your first victory here was back in 1974. 75. 75, excuse with me. With Black Dyke. With Black Dyke. Yeah. And that was your first real connection with brass bands, Yeah, well, I, I had a phone message one day. I was at Dyke's Music at the Grenadier Guards, and um, the phone rang, and this guy said, my name's Peter Lambert. Would you... Um, be interested in taking our little band, that's what he said, to a contest. <laughs> our little band. So nice. I said, no, I'm much too busy really. Which band is it? And he said, it's Black Dyke. And he said, uh, they're doing the national champions. He said, do you want to think about it? I said, no, I'll do it. Absolutely. And I'd never been worked with the brass band at all. Mm. And I loved the job I'd got. But then I went to Bradford for a rehearsal. And when I got there, it was a, it, you brought the stick down for the first time. It's something I've never felt before. It's like your blood had stopped. It was so terrific. <laughs> you know, it was and you've been hooked on bands ever since, right? Well, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, that was it, really. Yeah. We went from there. So how many first prizes have you won at the Albert Hall here, Major? Uh, don't, th don't be shy. I think it's seven. Seven, yeah, yeah that's amazing. I wish it was more. Yeah, yeah and, and some close shaves and some seconds and some... Oh, clothes. a lot of seconds. Yeah. But it's the seconds hurt worse than the tenths. Absolutely. Don't they? Because yeah. you know, you, yeah. you, you do it. It's first or nothing, really. You also, oh, once I thought with, with Grimey, we should have won, but that's how it is. You yeah. Know? And, and uh, another man did, but yeah. they get it right sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic that you're here today and conducting your band today was from Wales, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I start I, actually, while this contest has been preparing, I've been, been working with several bands, mm. helping them get ready. Yeah. And then I went down to Wales a couple of weeks ago, and then the conductor said, will you do it for us? I thought, well, why not? It's a bit of fun. And, and uh, they've worked very hard. Yeah. And it's very good for them, you know. It would be great to get in the prizes, wouldn't it? I don't think we will. No? Well, <laughs> you have a feeling. <laughs> no, I, I would be very happy to. This band is the first time they've done this because they, yeah. what, they qualified for the area championship in Wales last year. Yeah. This is the first time for 17 years they've been in this contest. Wow, that's amazing. So, in fact, this... Um, it's a great day out for It's them. a great day, yeah. 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 So, Thank you so much, Major. We really appreciate it. I'd get in the top ten. Top ten? If you could fix that. Let's see what we can do, huh? <laughs> yeah.
Brilliant. That's Thanks great. So yeah. On stage now we have the famous Grindfolk Colliery Band, stars of the movie Brassed Off, which everyone has seen, band number 16. It's going to be very exciting. Let's watch Grindfolk Colliery. So let us hear the 16th performance of our test piece. Thank you. Thank you. 
now that we're here. So this is Mike Dodd, solo euphonium with the Grand Thought Band, just played. Pretty happy with the performance, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there was obviously a few things in the split scene. I think musically, yeah. I think it was a very good musical performance. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we've got Mia Berlioz's thoughts. Absolutely. I mean, you, you can sense from the reaction of the audience at the end, they know this piece now, and they've heard 15 bands before you play it, and they were excited what the band did. So, I think it's a real test, yeah. this piece of music, because yeah. it's not all about soloists. No. It's all about playing together. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what it needs. Yeah. It needs a good overture. Well, the band's worked hard for this. Yeah. And after the open, with that early draw, you know, it was nice to get something. Well, I think the problem with the early draw is the adjudicators are learning the piece. Yeah. Especially if it's a newish piece. Especially a new piece. Yeah. Now, hopefully, Mr. Welt and uh, Mr. Whitten yeah. have probably played this piece when it was yeah. first sort of commissioned. Yeah. Um, so, I'm, you know, from band one, they should know the piece, yeah. which is good. Well, you know, I've got my fingers crossed for the band, so oh, let's wait much, another hour and we'll see. <laughs> okay. Cheers, Cheers, thank you. Well done. So now I'm with my good friend Roger Webster, principal cornet of the Grand Theft Corridor Band, the most famous cornet soloist in the world. And here he is. What do you think, Roger? Pretty happy? Um, personally, uh, it could have gone better as a band performance. I enjoyed going on stage and playing, as I normally do. Um, but yeah, I think as a band, it could have been tidier, it could have been a better performance, but that's contesting. You never know what's going to happen. People react differently under pressure. It's always, uh, it's always good fun to go on. Well, a, ba a band like Grand Thought is always going to be self-critical when it comes off stage. There's been performances that the band have rated to be better and has come nowhere in the prizes. Yep. It could be one of those days where the band thinks we could have done this, that, and it could win. And, and obviously, you can hear from the reaction in the hall, the audience loved it. They loved the sound of the band, particularly, the way they, they just take no prisoners. It's one of those, when you play Berlioz, it's one of those pieces that if you go for it, sometimes it comes off. So, yeah. It's a brave band and they always do great performances, but uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it was uh, it was nearer to working than not to working today. Absolutely. So I think the conductor's happy, so if he's happy, we're happy. He was happy, good. Oh yeah, he was happy, yeah. yeah. Not delighted, but happy. So you're due for a nice cup of tea now? I'm going for a, no, I think I'll have an Earl Grey. Yes, a nice Earl Grey and a biscuit. Wonderful. Or maybe a half. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got had him in bed for about quarter past eleven last night. So all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're you're going to stop this, you know. That's very nice. <laughs> I sneaked down at half past 11, to, to, but they've gone there, so I had a few more oh, wine. Exactly, yeah. 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 <laughs> but they still think I went to bed at quarter past 11. Excellent. So, yeah, Richard, we're making a movie for Buffet Crambon on this wonderful right. day. Oh. So, it is it is the absolute pinnacle of brass band contest, isn't it? The national championships. Sure. The sure. most famous. Oh. How many have you done now? This is my 20th, apparently. And I've never won it yet. And I think you're on, because there's applause. Oh, yeah. so we yeah, wish you the very now, best, Richard. Thanks, dude. Thank Cheers. you very much. Sir. And your band. Terrific. Cheers. Thank you very much. So, coming on stage now is the last band of the day, band number 20. It's the Leyland Band. Last year they were the winners. This year they're drawn to play last. It's a great climax to the day. It's the last big band, it's the last band of the whole day. And let's see if they've left something special to the end.
Well, that's band number 20. Was it good enough to win? I'm not sure. Nobody's sure yet. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to go and see that man, Ewan Fox, from Four Bars Rest. He thinks he knows who's won. Let's go find him. Just the man we're looking for. Yes. We're live on camera. Live on camera, yes. What do we want? Come on. Here he is. What a bit of fortune. I just said, I have no idea. This man will have some idea. Not that it counts for anything. It Give does. us your first five, Ewan. First five for me is Baiseville to win it. Mm -hmm. Grainthorpe in second place with um, Black Dyke in third. We quite like YBS, but I don't think we're going to get there. But mm -hmm. I enjoy YBS. Uh, Fairies and Rothwell, Ooh. which we thought did a very good... Rothwell, Dark Horse there, dark horse. sneaking in. And apart from that, that was, that's... Then that's after the, that, we throw them up in the air. That's the verdict from the Welsh judge. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Not Let's see not. in about 45 minutes. Thanks a lot. Cheers. So that's all the bands done. Everyone here will have their own favourite. Some people are talking about Black Dyke. Some people are talking of, uh, of Grindthorpe Band. Some people are talking as Buyers You View. Who knows, there could be a surprise, depending on what the judges are looking for. If they're looking for a brass band playing Berlioz like a brass band, it may give us a different result than somebody who's looking at it to sound more orchestral. There could be a surprise. I think it'll be one of the big name bands today. But what do I know? So everybody who knows anything about Buffet Crampon will know who this gentleman is. It's a great pleasure to welcome Mr. Paul Bowner to the Royal Albert Hall. Is this your first visit here, Paul? Yes, it's your first visit for brass band, of course. Yeah. I knew uh, Royal Albert Hall before, many years ago. Yeah. But with the brass band, it's the first time I, I oh. am very enjoyed about the, the sound, about uh, different as clarinet, of course. Mm, of course. And now, of course, we have a, a French composer here as well. Yes. But no yes. French bands, of course, but it's the British Championship. Oh, next, next. <laughs> but a very strong uh, influence here and all around the hall, there's been this feeling uh, of excitement, not only for the bands, but because the new instruments are here. Mm -hmm. And there's great representation all around the hall. We see the name Besson. So you must feel very proud uh, that the, 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 all the hard work has resulted in this. I have to tell you, the first time when I came in this uh, hall, I was so emotional to see the Besson name and with uh, somewhere Buffet Campon behind. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I was very impressed, impressed by the, the number of persons uh, in this uh, uh, hall. Yes, it's, uh, that has been a nice surprise for everybody. Yes. So, yeah, it's been a terrific day. We've, we've met a lot of interesting personalities from the brass band world. We've met the musicians. And, and for me, as somebody who's played here many times, it's great to see the, the tradition of Besson now alive and moving forwards. And people are very, very happy about that. So thanks to all you've done to make this, this dream come true for brass players in this country. Thank you very Thank much, Paul. It's been a great day. Thank you.
with 194 points, the band that played number eight last night. So this is Terry Webster, he's, he's uh, chairman of the band, he runs the band. How do you feel, Terry? Uh, over the moon, absolutely unbelievable. It's, uh, Must be an incredible thing. I mean, yeah. You dream it as a player, I played, and you dream it as, for years as a little lad, and I never thought it'd ever come to, to, yeah. to this. Absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great, Thanks you're going to have a great day. Cheers, Thanks. mate. See you later. <laughs> 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 One of the quieter members of the band. Congratulations, mate. You get the whole band behind there. Congratulations, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. From your part of the world. Bloody great. Absolutely bloody great. Oh! Hey, well done, Bill. Cheers, Cheers, mate. What a way. What a way to win. Probably not. So, you heard the results. The Grimethorpe Band is the first place winner. I am delighted. I have so many friends in this band. On Wednesday night, I'm working with them. It couldn't be a better start. The consensus is it was a wonderful performance. They deserve to win. By Grimethorpe's own high standards, maybe they felt, as you heard from Roger Webster, that maybe they hadn't done enough. They did enough. They won by two points. Now the band are going to come and you'll see how this band celebrates. It's a great day. Dino, what's the lead? Oh, that's the best. Number six. Well done, Dino. Number six. The champagne is tonight. You deserve it, mate. Oh, how good's that? <laughs> best, better than the World Cup, this, I tell you. Better than the World Cup. <laughs> and it's ever you. <laughs> Absolutely best. So this is Bill Relton, one of our most famous, uh, experienced of judges. You heard his CV about he used to be a great trumpet player, cornet player. I can't believe this, Stephen. I mean, that's... So, what do you think? Good day today. I think you were a great performer, Stephen. I mean... uh, I'm blushing now. Yeah. But it must have been a reasonably easy job for a band to win by two points. It was, uh, well, it, it was there were some outstanding performance. performances, yeah. Yeah. but that was very, very clearly uh, yeah. uh, ahead of the field. Yeah. And they clearly knew the hall and they knew what it they takes knew, to make, to this, make hall this hall ring. sound. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Well, we think you've got it absolutely spot on. He's a wonderful chap. I'm, so, I'm so pleased to see him again. After you, you, you are, you're too young to remember him being the greatest euphonium player in the world. Nah, nah, come on. Hey, let's, go, let's go buy that drink, right, I the promised you. You found a friend the union. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Good to be with Great you. Great to see you again. Right. So this is David Reed, our uh, most, most well-known and most highly respected judge in the brass band movement today. <laughs> You've enjoyed today? Oh, great playing. Yeah. You know. I mean, there was... Uh, I mean, Grime Talk were outstanding. They were, weren't they? They played Berlioz, didn't they? And yeah. the others were great brass bands, you yeah. know. Um, but they gave, we gave them two clear points. So yeah, that's great. That was to tell you that we yeah. thought that they were they were easily... Well, we we had no doubt that they were... That was your barber. <laughs> <laughs> and this brings me... Just, just in a moment of... Just a moment of great intellectual insight onto the result. And then that brings me on... <laughs> to Jeff Whitten, who's our, who's the third judge, the final one. Jeff, it's been great, hasn't it today? Right, super. I don't yeah. know if you could tell, but the hall was buzzing pretty much all day. 
Yeah. Well, we could yeah. really, but it tells you something. It does. I the whole. You all right. No, that's fine. No, it's, this is all part of the atmosphere. Good. Yeah. So yeah, the hall was was more full than it's been for years and years. Isn't it nice? People sat and listened to it. Good for bands. Yeah, it's and the piece drew them back in, and they that that faith was rewarded by some excellent, excellent bands. Oh. Yes, yes. yes. It, it brought the best yeah. out of the Brest and Brest bands. Yeah, yes, it did. Yeah. yeah, and one particularly was yeah. super. And yeah. it's uh, yeah, weren't too easy, were it? No. And it, 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 isn't it surprising how some of the simpler sounding things? Really proved yes, the biggest no, challenge. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yes, so, so you don't have a million notes, yeah. it can be it does not have to be complicated time signatures, no complicated fingering, no complicated rhythms, yeah, just plain and simple and play the music. Yeah, get that's the music right. Yeah. Well, that's think, all we want. I think the consensus, David, this has been a day to remember. The audience have had a great time, the bands have enjoyed it. And if I may say, we think you've got it just about spot on as well. I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs>